In this video, we're going to talk about Newton's second law, but before we do that, we must introduce the idea of momentum. Now, in physics, we assign the small letter P to this to uh, represent momentum. And remember that the momentum of an object is the product of its mass and its velocity, right? So momentum is a vector and uh, it is measured in kilograms, meters, second minus one. So what exactly is momentum? Well, momentum, if you think about stuff that have high momentum, they either have a very high mass, very high magnitude of velocity, or both. And so some examples of things with high momentum could include a car moving on the expressway, a bullet from a gun, right, or even something like a huge elephant, right? These are all things that have large momentum. And if I ask you what's in common with a bullet, a car, and, a, and an elephant, well, they all look like things that are potentially very dangerous. We don't want to get in the way of any one of these things. So the idea is that these things could potentially cause a bit of hurt. And momentum itself doesn't actually cause the hurt. The thing that causes damage is force. And so we want to see what is the relationship between momentum and force and force. Now, thankfully, Newton's second law does just that. And so what exactly is Newton's second law? Well, Newton says that the force, the resultant force on an object is basically directly proportional or actually is equal to the rate of change of its momentum. And this resultant force must be in the same direction as the change in momentum. And so, basically, if we think about it in a rather or a slightly simpler way, the average force on an object is the change in its momentum over a, over a certain period of time delta t. So, for example, consider a car crash, right? So, if a car hits a tree, okay, there is a large change in momentum because the car would have been traveling at some high velocity and it would stop when it hits the tree. And so the change in momentum is rather large. And the time taken for this change in momentum to occur, of course, you can imagine is very small. And so that is why cars crashing the trees are generally quite destructive, right? There's a large force on the car. And so a change in momentum in a very quick amount of time creates a large force. And that basically is what Newton's second law is trying to tell us. Now, when we look at Newton's second law again, okay, dp dt, of course, we know that momentum is mv dt. And so there are actually two ways to look at Newton's second law. Now, the first scenario involves a constant mass. And so if the mass is constant, we can pull it out of the differential, leaving us with m dv dt which is ma, which is, of course, the very famous equation, f equals to ma, which is not quite Newton's second law, but you can see that it comes from Newton's second law. And uh, that is the alternative way of looking at it, constant velocity. And so objects with a constant velocity can also exert a force, uh, and that will work like this, v dm dt. So if I move at a constant velocity, but there is a rate of mass, of the item which or the you know the, the object which hits you that can also exert a force and these are typically uh seen in things like water jets right think about being hit by a hose of water or an air jet having a fan blow air in front of you you feel the air because there's a rate of water droplets hitting you or a rate of air particles hitting you and so these are the two forms of newton's second law and we will explore them in separate videos